whatever it's taking in training in the, in the bottom part of Korea before we went to action. Yeah, the only one I know there is Lance McKay. He was in the half boom and yeah, well, he's a, probably an islander. I don't think we have many Aboriginals. And Darky Povo, Frank Povo. Darky Povo. Well, he's Aboriginal. PC Law. His initials were PC, so we used to call him PC Law. <laughs> and that's Gordon Ball, a bloody beautiful kind of player. He married a prostitute we were in Malaya. He did. She, she was Kat, Katina. And she was off bag, but she was young and a good brute, obviously. <laughs> and uh, they live up, up near Mount Tambourith. I went up the scene once, and there was Darkie, of course. <laughs> he was called Leather Lips because he's a beautiful corner player. <laughs> <laughs> That's me That's taking you know. a rickshaw in. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And I can't understand. Oops. I can't understand why I got a baby in now. Or is it a <laughs> flowers? Wouldn't be that. It'd be booze. It'd be booze. I was taking the rickshaw. No thanks. I'm having half of my fun here. That was Jack Carroll. I don't know who that bloke's name is now, but that was in the, the, the Union Jack Club in Singapore. So. So every he, time, every time I picked my camera up, that bastard was in it. He used to be like this around the trenches, or we we're out in the route marts there, or we we're going up the line. I think we'll look at the gear. You had a camera. Said, yeah. I, this I, was your camera. All these photos I took. Was that a big deal back in the day that you had a camera? Oh yeah. And I, and I, I lost. I had my second one stolen. The second one stolen. I said I'll never have another camera, and I kept my word. And it was me. Own stupidity. I didn't get any more stuff. Oh, really? Yeah. Luckily, I had the camera when we first got to Korea. There was a sergeant, corporal, captain, a major were in charge of the garden. This bloke here, he was a hero. He was cut off from Australia with his company up in Timor for two, 1941 and then 1943. They, all, they thought they were all dead. Oh, they, yeah. they were still fighting the Japanese. They were, and, uh, oh, that, that bloke was a hero in Korea. That, uh, he was a little lieutenant. I got him in a book, a good story on him. And <coughs> this bloke, they made up a radio. Yeah. And they were in Timor, and two years they've been missing. And oh, they survived for two years. Uh, killing Japs and taking their weapons and food and living in the jungle, all that kind of thing. They, Jesus Christ. They did the lot, yeah. And old Bull did that. And they. This is Paul on the right. Yeah. Paul McKenzie, his name was too. He's Captain Major McKenzie. And this is Captain Gardner. He was the one who won the military cross in the military cross. Military cross in, military cross in, the, in uh, Korea. And that's the little sergeant. He is a little, isn't he? Yeah. He, 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 number 16. In the middle of really in little. those days. Uh, he was our drill sergeant for this particular guard. Yeah. So we had two officers, three senior commission, non-commissioned officers, and then the rest of us. Well, that bloke there I was talking about, and they made a radio up out of the bits that they found, and they contacted right. Darwin. Jesus. We were still alive, and Darwin said, bullshit, they were captured 541. This was two years later. Anyway, they didn't know. They got him out of a submarine. Are you serious? Eh? Went back in and got him. Well, they got him out in the end, yeah. There's my father and my sister. There you go, father and Beryl taken at Gold Gold. 1953, 1928 Buick car. Yeah. Is that the one you were telling me before? Yeah, yeah. I would have had that here. Yeah. Oh, this is Newton again. Every time I took a photo, took me section in. I was a section leader, so I was just in the front. Yeah. I turn around and take a photo, you know. There he was. Bang! <laughs> <laughs> this was a, this was a sad day. We just come out of the lady, lady uh, Camp Casey. Camp Casey. We just that? come out of the front line, and uh, we had a very bad time. And we came out, and they, we put us in tents. And uh, it was about eight in mine. I was asleep there one day about lunchtime. We used to, I looked, they didn't let us do much because we were all shot. Yeah. And the, the next thing is this bloody explosion next to me. One of our stupid bastards had gone off his head and thrown a grenade. And 
killed two of our blokes. And they ended up with the pods coming in to get them out or just got them. Yeah. That's the trucks we used to travel in Malaya, so we wouldn't get Remember? hurt. That would be about 50. And that's like a troop carrier? Yeah! Look at this! There's tiny windows, this is for like it's air. Like... Like... Yeah. yeah. That, this was solid steel. And Jesus. you get in there, and you can't believe how hot it is, and the bloody old trucks are old Bedford trucks, and you can't imagine the noise. And it's, they blew a tyre and you're laying on your side. They were horrible. So in the end, we had the old 6x6 uh, GMC uh, American trucks with our own trucks. Is that you? No, no, it's not me. I don't know. No, it's not. And uh, we preferred to travel them even though they only had a soft top. <laughs> <laughs> the nose, horrible thing. See, they only had single wheels on those great trucks. It's crazy. So if they fired a shot into that, we're arse up. Finished. Tip. That's the Union Jack Club, Britannia Club, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah that's when we got robbed. Well, this was a big modern building the British had bought, bought for their trips. So there's there 26,000 British, only a few of us. And because they found out in about 10 minutes that we all had no money, and when we'd walk into these places, they'd think, oh, here comes these bastards borrowing money. And everyone would take off. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. But we borrowed up the, <laughs> to as far as we could. It'd, it'd be uh, So who would be here, like... Pommies and oh, well, families or? See, the Pommies had, had service people there for years and years and years and years. And uh, that was a big club, it was for everyone. Could Any service in. person here, yeah. Well, dependent. That's my two oldest. Is that Jules? That's Jules. And Russ. Yeah. Is Russell picking his nose? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> he learned that early. <laughs> Oh, that's when I was concrete in front of the house just after we... <laughs> Actually, danger. Yeah, do not use front. front door. 22 foot from this fence. And, and that was... I, I thought, well, that's easy. But when the carpenters come in, they said, where do you want this bloody out? <laughs> but anyway, they put it where I wanted. Because, see, I had a drive going in there, and when they cut the timber for the carport, they cut it the wrong way. So that's why we drive in that way now. And that farm behind us, and oh, there's two farms there, the little one here, and the big one up on the hill, which is now the race course. And she said, the, one, the lady who had the little farm, she said, I'm leaving this to my church. And that's after a few years, yes. yes, yes. It looks so different from what it was doing. Actually, Ernie Eastwood. And when I went to Warmerall together. Okay. There's a little story about Ernie. He had five brothers and five sisters. And they lived just not far from us up in Gold Gold. Oh, yeah, along the creek a bit. And in 1945, Victory in Japan Day, everyone was celebrating Christmas. Yeah. But it wasn't VE Day, because that was before the European War finished. Victory in Japan Day, his little sister, Valley, Disappeared. His sister. Yeah. So Dad was out searching, and every car come out from Mildura, they'd fill him with petrol. And instead of going searching, the bastards went back into Mildura. But there's a lot of people did searching, and they never found a trace of her. Dad, what was it? Some used to sit to us little pigs that stinky smell. Oh gosh, I know we made that one up. Anyway, <laughs> this was a, a 28 Buick eight. Oh, no, it's all dust and shit there. But it was a beautiful car, and it sat up there for years. This, this is in their box. And I said to Colin, you know, his brother-in-law, up there, yep. Bill, I said, I'm going to take that back there and restore that, because that car would be worth mints now. Mm. And he got the wreckers and took them away the bars. So that's twice I got me. <laughs> and that's Heather's kids. They're both 50 now. And there they are again, down at Dad's fish. Dad used to catch those fish. Oh, they had big wire crates down in the Murray. Yeah. And he'd put them in that, and they'd be alive. And if you went, when you wanted to fish, or sell a fish, get rid of the fish. Here's Julie. And here, yeah. and here's Russell. That was the best car ever had. What's here. that, an EK? EFC, that one. <laughs> don't get up in that door, Julie. I don't want you climbing on the door of that car. It's, she was one of, one, of, one of those <laughs> girls who says, when you say to her, don't you do that, no, there we go. Gee, really? <laughs> it's my father. I saw that. Soccer ball winner. <laughs> and that's his up. 
And that's his old bag. That's one of Dad's fishes. Who's that? His old bag. That's Jeannie. Your darling grandmother. Oh, that's the bag I have. That's where Julie busted her teeth on that step. Oh, really? Number 30. <coughs> Don't run up those steps, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that, Julie? Yeah. When you oh. fell on your teeth on the back of the new house. Don't run up. Yeah, don't run up those steps, Joe. Bang. That's how the River Murray flooded. That's our house. So there's the water level there, yeah? Right. There, you can see the cross. Yeah. Jeez. So uh, the river bank was way down below this tree, this gum tree here. Yeah. And in 56, it was the biggest flood that's ever been known. And I was away. I was in Malaya 56, and Albert sent me that. And out there, he wrote a big white lizard, painted it on. He wrote under 1956. That's nothing. I must have just made my carport. Now that gives me an idea how long I've got the temporary carport's been up. That's Jeannie coming out the back of our house in a boat. In a boat. That's Beryl. And Margaret Murphy, I lived up the corner. That's our house. Well, not the house, that's the shed where the, where the car was. I'd be about 16. That's Betty Murphy. And that's Kenny Murphy. That's Beryl. Oh, Beryl, you're the twins. Yeah. Oh, in Malaya, that was funny. We'd been out for a long time and we had a lot of money. And we were in Penang one day wandering around. And the number there would get pissed and then wander around and get pissed more, you know. So <clears throat> we went past this garage, a little garage. Chinese boat in there, and there's three of those there, and there was me and Louis. Oh, I can't think of the name now. And we walked in, and we said, How much of the scooters? And he said, The price said, We'll take the three. Poor old fellow nearly died. Well, the first three scooters we got into Penang. I decided one in one hit. And, yeah, we got the three piece soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> we wish we had money in those yeah. days. Yeah. We'd go and jump off for four months, we wouldn't spend the money. Yeah. I brought mine back to Australia. There it is. I brought it back to Australia and I traded it on a big humber. Really? Yep. But anything back. going over there, you, you just put your na name on, told, like it went through the paperwork. Yep. And then our engineer or somebody packed them. Number? What's that? 39. It's Jeannie and Beryl. That's our block. After. That's us in Tokyo in the Sacred Island. Where am I? Here I am. The little the hey, little spunk. This boat here. That was funny. No, here, Johnson. When he was married in Beth, I bought I never ever knew that at that time. Yeah. And we were up in the front lawn, been there for a long time. And uh, we used to hit mail every now and then they'd get us mail. And he come in and he said, I think I'll go outside and shoot myself now. That's a stupid thing to say anyway. And I thought that bastard might be gonna do that. And that's what he was going to do. His wife was home in Australia and she started going there with young bucks on motorbikes and that. And he was in Korea, a pretty nasty place. And that someone from home wrote. So he was, he was going to hook him. We contacted the padre. And the, the army was very good in the They supported you at home in cases like that, you know, or family cases, any yeah. kind. And the next thing I know that his. Oi! That's enough! The army, whoever, it's like a bit, have been up and straightened her out. Really? The army at home sent someone around to see his missus. From, from uh, Korea, they contacted head office in uh, Japan. Joe and Sui, missus, her husband is in a serious condition because, you know. Mm, he's got work. He's been, let us go there. Um, someone tell you that she has been unfaithful to him and stuff like that. And uh, we didn't talk about these things. No. But, but uh, I know that uh, the, the army psych, psycho whatever people have been straight out from sea to just after I found him and shoot himself. Wow. And he, that's Jeannie out in the boat or soccer or me, one of us. No, oh, no, I wasn't there. That's Jeannie. There's Jeannie out in the boat. She's a pretty handy old bitch for the bush in those days. That's my sister Heather, feeding Dad's kangaroos, I think, or maybe their own. No, she used to be out in the station to cook with her husband uh, on a sheep station, and she used to rear little joeys and that. 
Here we yeah. go, shooting rouge. Yeah. And uh, sometimes you'd get one on the pants. I had one once too. And she'd bring it home and rear them. Yes. She had cancer the year and she wouldn't do nothing about it. It's up in the block. There's Jeannie, and I don't think it's her daughter. Uh, don't think it's Beryl. Yeah. Might be though, because there's the old gold old bridge. Well, that's gone there. Yeah, that's when we used to live in the other block, which was over on the edge of the bridge. So that could be Beryl. It's long enough. Well, that's me. Oh no, that's Captain. That's he just died, Kenzie. He's still alive in Brisbane. Is he? Yep. Uh, that's five. What was Mackenzie's name? I was in the army with Ray Mackenzie. Yeah, that was the photo was taken when the Queen came out in '54. We'd just come back from Korea. Yeah. And we were picked for the guard. Well, we weren't picked. They got bloody hundred blokes, and they just kept wearing us down until there was only the primary one left. And these two were picked as guard corporal and guard sergeant. Don Parsons, that is. Ray McKenzie, he only died either this year or last year, down here in Melbourne. Wow. Les McKay, me, Tony Johnson, Jim, 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 Jim. They were all in my section. We, Lenny Garrigan, he was from home. Uh, that's in That looks like a Chinese thing. <laughs> no, it's in uh, Kira in Japan. Now it's in Hiro. Hiro used to be a big shipbuilding yard. Yeah. And the Australian tourists when we got there, we had to wreck all this stuff. They built submarines there and battleships there. And there was tunnels full of ammunition and everything you could think of. And the Australians had to get rid of them. We were just going in and leave this night. What? Uh, well, you had to just go in and destroy everything? No, we were... <laughs> oh, later on, the troops did that. Yeah. We had demolition troops that just went straight in and uh, there's nothing they could salvage unless they brought it back to Australia. So they destroyed everything. There was kinds of gases and I wasn't there before this, we were after this. But they, and there was parts, I don't know how many submarines were there. Bloody dozens and dozens of them. They destroyed them. Oh, of course, I know we made that one up. <laughs> <laughs>